All right, so check it out. So I had the hood on it and I did it because I thought I was kind of in the mood where I was going to be able to get this POR15 put on, then lock up this front end and go ahead and take the truck and uh, clear it. So the outside of the body would be done. I could get going with putting the upholstery and everything back in it. But while I had the radiator support off of it, I kind of got to look at it and realize that I have all access to the motor right now. That's a good time to do to do anything else that I want to do to the motor and to try to kind of sort out. I want to see if I can use the factory um, inner splash liners from the 77. Uh, I want to see if I, maybe I can kind of modify them to fit in here some type of way. So I'll, while, the, while the grill and the radio support and everything is out of it, I'm going to go ahead and try to see if I can get something going with that. And as far as the motor goes, I do have an engine driven compressor that I'll show you in just a minute that I plan to run all my air off of. And it is a custom built compressor. Uh, we'll do kind of a, uh, I don't know, an unboxing, I guess, on um, that here in, here in just a few, and I'll tell you all about that. Um, where I'm thinking, I'm gonna try to mount this thing. I'm gonna try to make a bracket and mount it right here. Um, I can always get a longer belt. So right now that's my thinking. Uh, I haven't worked out all the details of it just yet, but that's what I'm thinking right now. So uh, I'm gonna start with, uh, let me go get this compressor. All right, so check this bad boy out. This is my engine driven compressor. It is based off of a York. Uh, a Ford, uh, you know, York AC compressor. I got it from a company called Off-Road Only. I believe they're out of Colorado. I think that's where they're from. Uh, this is not just your average York compressor. You see the head is different. This thing is custom built. The head is custom made for it. It has uh, steel sleeves in the cylinders. They did a bunch of stuff to the head. It's got a sight glass already uh, uh, put in it. Um, it comes with compressor oil. You have to buy the clutch for it separately. They offer a V-groove or a serpentine belt. Obviously, I got the serpentine belt one. Uh, this dude flows uh, 10 CFM. So, uh, I mean, that's that's probably, that's actually more than my, you know, um, TSC air compressor flows. So, I'm pretty excited about this thing. Just got to make a bracket and get her on there. Uh, it will run at 90 degrees or, or, I'm sorry, 90 degrees. It will lay straight up and down. It will mount straight up and down or laying on its side and operate either way so i'm pretty excited about it now i just got to get a bracket made for it and get her going check it out hopefully you can see this without me taking the fan off because i don't have an air hammer handy and that's the easiest way to get those fans off and really i don't have to have it off right now just to try to get an idea of what i'm gonna do with this bracket so you saw i removed the ac compressor and i removed the idle pulley so i've got these three bolts right here that bolt this bracket on that holds this idle pulley and the belt tensioner and the belt tensioner here so what i'm going to try to do is use these three bolts right here to make my bracket that will come off of it. And then I've got a stud that's on top of the head right here. I don't know, maybe I'll try to tie it into that. It's, it's really, it's a valve cover bolt. So, I mean, it's not, if I use it, cool. If not, that's cool too. This all depends on how, how sturdy I can get it off of these three. Ideally, I'd like to have one more to tie it into. I had thought about making a plate that goes right here and maybe coming, coming directly off and then tying it in down here. Uh, I'm just going to kind of have to play with it a little bit, give me some cardboard, throw it up here, kind of, uh, you know, see what I like. Basically, all I need is a flat plate right here to bolt that compressor right to the side of, and then I'll just have to <clears throat> get something to line my pulleys up, go from there. So that's kind of where I'm at right now. I'm going to have to get a little uh, cardboard and, you know, just kind of lay this thing up here and hold the compressor in place about 300 times and then just kind of get a, get a feel for how I want to do this thing. Um, as far as if I space this up, it really doesn't matter. I'm going to have to get a longer belt anyway. So whether I space this up or just use these bolts on the front, really doesn't matter. I'm going to do what will work out easiest for me. So I think that's what anybody would do. So I don't know. We'll see what I come up with. Obviously, if I use any of these two bolts right here, um, I'll have to get longer bolts. I'll order them from McMaster Car or somewhere like that. Or maybe, I don't know, Fasten All might have some. 
Uh, these up here, they look like they're pretty long, but if I have to get some new ones of those, that's not a big deal either. I'm gonna use 3 sixteenths, uh, uh, 3 sixteenths plate steel to make this bracket. So we'll, we'll see what I come up with, see if I can up something fast and easy. check it out so you get the basic idea of what I'm planning to do here I'm gonna make a plate for here make a plate for here weld them together down this seam I'll clean up the shape a little bit obviously I'll kind of cut it in where it's a little bit you know more form-fitting around here so it doesn't look so clunky and bulky same for down here I'll have to cut it to clear the um, the, the tensioner but my plan is to make one plate that will go on the outside right here and this is basically going to, this is, you know, obviously my bolt pattern for my um, compressor. So in case y'all didn't figure it out, uh, whenever I mark the bolt holes for this front piece and when I mark the bolt holes for this, there's a puddle of oil in the floor over here that dripped out of this thing. And I was just going over and dipping my finger in that and rubbing around the bolt holes there. That way you can see it soaks in everywhere except for right where the hole is. That way I know where to drill so I can bolt it all in place. Yeah, it's kind of primitive, I know, but it works. So, you know, I just go with it. So the biggest thing I've got to figure out right now is I've got to set my AC compressor on here. I've got to get the clearance cut out to put my idler pulley back on here. Then kind of see where all the pulleys set and see in relate, see how they sit in relation to where my compressor is. Because the one thing that I don't know right now, I mean, obviously I can see that right now, yes, I could set it up and my compressor would bolt on 
right like that, but I've got to figure out if it's deep enough so my pulley will line up because if it's if if it's deep enough right there or if it needs to come out some, that's not a problem. I can do that if it needs to come forward. But if it needs to go back, what I'll have to do is extend these brackets out enough because I can't really take this one back anymore because it's hitting the valve cover. But if I take it out probably an inch, inch and a half, I've got all the room in the world to move here. So that's my next move right now. I think what I'm gonna do is just bolt the AC compressor down right over top of this. Uh, I'm gonna have to cut this out, this, uh, this piece out right here to clearance the idler. Then I'll get my idler, um, not idler, I don't know why I keep calling that idler, the belt tensioner. I'll get my tensioner bolted back on. Then I'll be able to kinda at least roughly set my compressor up here and see if everything clears good. Man, it would be perfect if that would just sit up there like that because I made, I whipped that up pretty quick and I could cut that out of steel and weld it together in no time. So that'd be really nice. I'm sure it's probably not going to happen, but, um, you know, wishful thinking. So I'm going to try and get start getting this thing cut out. I mean, my next move would be to cut out for this uh, belt tensioner right here. So way I can bolt my tensioner on and drop my AC compressor on. Yep. You guessed it, I did the old oil trick so I could figure out what shape I needed to cut around that uh, tensioner. But hey, if it works, run with it, right? Well, after all that messing and fiddling with this stupid thing, basically what I have is a left hand thread 5 16 24 bolt and a right hand thread 5 16 24 stub sticking out of this motor. No idea why they sent a left hand thread bolt to go in a right hand thread motor. No clue. Uh, I'm just gonna stick this thing on here for right now. I didn't have a bolt like I needed handy and I don't feel like going to Home Depot right now. So I'm just gonna stick this thing on here, try to hold it together enough so I can kind of get a rough uh, fitment of what I need to do with my steel so I can at least rough out my bracket and I'll go get a bolt tomorrow. So let's see if we can set it up there and see what kind of clearance we got. All right, so the plan is to mount the compressor straight up and down, um, pull the belt from down here off of our tensioner, pull it up and around the pulley, and mount it here. Now. Once I bolted my AC compressor back down, I then realized that it dips down below the, the bolt surface. So I'm gonna end up having to basically make a bracket that bolts here and then make a spacer for the other side. That way it'll space both sides up evenly. And for this, the dipstick actually has got a little bracket here that attaches on the corner of the valve cover. So I'm gonna have to open up the a section somewhere right in here, probably, I'll probably just kind of cut this bracket and angle it something like this. That way that dipstick can will have room to come through. 
somewhere through, I don't really remember how it goes, somewhere like this, something like this. Okay, so yeah, it, it comes up like that, so. I don't really know what I'm gonna have to do about that dipstick just yet. Um, I'll worry about that after I get this bracket kind of roughly fabbed up. But anyhow, that's my plan, so we'll pull it up here, we'll kind of eyeball it, see what it looks like here, see what we need to do here. Because this is a real pain in the ass to have to do by yourself because this weighs 35 pounds by itself and I'm pushing it against cardboard so you know how sturdy that is and I'm really just kind of having to eyeball all this because I don't have any help so it's just the life of working alone. I'm used to it. Alright, so if we go firm against our bracket right here, looks like that would actually, that would probably work right there. Not really touching a lot on the tensioner on this pulley, but on the other side I am. Um, should I drop it down some? Or maybe if I move it out. Let's see. If I move it out, I can drop it down just a little bit. That will probably give me clearance for... Yeah, that will give me clearance for my dipstick to come up through there. So that may be the way to go right there. Looks like, I don't know, roughly a inch, inch and a half. So come out from there. I'm still hitting the crank pulley pretty pretty good down there, and well, this might work. All right, so ugh, that's good on the back. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to extend this bracket out about an inch, inch and a half. I don't know, maybe inch and a half. I guess I'll extend this one out an inch and a half. Um, not real sure yet how I'm going to work out the dipstick and all that. If I can get the compressor mounted first of all and everything lined up, then I can start cutting away from the, the bracket enough to figure out what I got to do to get that dipstick on there. I'll, I'll work out something for that. I mean, if I have to, I'll just jam the dipstick down and have it come straight out the top like this. I don't know. I'll, I'll figure that out. The dipstick ain't going to stop me from getting this compressor mounted out. I, I assure you of that. So my next step, uh, I'm going to pull all this stuff back off. Um, transfer the templates on the steel, extend them an inch and a half out. I'll cut them out. I'll go ahead and I'll separate this one that way it's a spacer. Uh, get this ready, get it all bolted up back in place. And then uh, I'll go ahead and just make a flat piece of plate right now for right here. And um, actually, I may make a piece that lines up with the bolt holes and go ahead and just kind of bolt it on. That way I can kind of sit it up here and get an idea for where I really got to be as far as bolting it all in place. Because once it all lines up, I can tack it in place. So next step, get all this stuff off, transfer all this to steel, cut it out, drill some holes, and then see where we're sitting here. So let's get cutting. All right, that's all you get for right now. So far, so good. It uh, you know seems like it's going to be a pretty easy process. Got uh, most of the brackets kind of coming together with the cardboard there. Um, got to stay tuned for the next episode, see how we come together. Hopefully I can get it done in, in two. I, I will say it, it does not go as easily the whole way as it might seem. So uh, stay tuned for 38, see how we finish it out. As always, like, subscribe. Thank you so much for viewing. See you in the next one.